times 5 equals 15. So I'm going to go, there's, here's 5, and I'm going to write, uh, maybe choose a different color, um, you know what, let me start again. So here's 5, 1, 2, 3, 5 positives, right, because that's a positive number, so plus another group of 5. Plus another group of five. So what am I exact? What exactly I'm doing? I'm going further down. Right, further down, further, further to the right on the number line, right? So if I were to do this on a number line, here is my first five, my second five, and then my third five, and I end up fifteen. Right, I'm increasing value. So three times five. Okay, it's completely uh, pretty self-explanatory. Right? So that equals 15, and nobody has an issue. So positive times a positive, which gives you a positive. Now, what if I have a positive times a negative? Why is it that negative 15? Well, likewise, let me do negative 5, three groups of negative 5. And I'm adding them, right? Isn't multiplication repeated addition? So, and in this case, if I have a number line, I'm going negative 5. Now I'm going to go another negative 5 because I'm going further and further left on the number line, right? I'm decreasing the value. And I oh, ended up in, what do you call it? And I end up in negative 15. So if I add a negative plus a negative plus a negative, so whether you're using chips or you're using a number line, we can prove that the positive times a negative equals uh, uh, a negative. All right? And if you do negative 5 times 3, isn't multiplication commutative, right? Negative 5 times 3 is the same thing as three times negative five. So a positive times a negative, positive times a negative will always be a negative. Okay, or whether you see it as negative times a positive, still a negative. So we know now so far that a positive times a positive is a positive and now with this, with this example we can prove that a positive times a negative is a negative and a negative times a positive is a negative. So that's okay. So now the problem becomes this. What happens when it's a negative times a negative? Well, so I use the distributive property as some number properties today to explain or, uh, or prove to you why a negative times a negative is a positive. So let's go over the distributive property first. The distributive property tells you that the term, right, this factor outside is multiplying everybody on the terms inside, right, the factor. So it's going to be 5 times 2 and then plus 5 times 3. So that, using the distributive property, becomes this. 10 and 2, 5 and 2 is 10, 5 and 3 is 15. That gives me 15. Now, if you didn't want to use the distributive property and use order of operations, 2 and 3 inside the parentheses is 5. And if you multiply that by the factor outside, you get 25. So either way, you get the same answer. So let's use the distributive property. Why does another multiply by 0 equals 0? Well, let's see if I can use this to prove. Now, I'm going to change that expression. Instead of 5 times 0, I'm going to go 5 times, and something that gives me 0. Let me do 3 plus negative 3. Notice that 3 plus negative 3 is the same thing as 0, so I'm not really changing anything. It's still equal to 0, but I just rewrote 0 as a sum of 3 plus negative 3. Now, let's apply the distributive property. If I apply the distributive property, I get 5 times 3, and I'm going to write that down plus 5 times negative 3. So I didn't change anything, everything is the same value, it has to still equal 0. Well, if we do 5 times 3, we know 5 times 3 is 15, right? We know that, we proved that before. Plus, now I have to figure out what 5 times negative 3 is. And 5 times negative 3, just by logic here, if this statement is supposed to be 0, it has to equal negative 15. Right? And if it does equal negative 15, 15 plus negative 15 does equal 0, which equals 0 on the other side. So here is a, another way of proving, using logic, right, what a positive times a negative equals to. So now keep that in mind so we, we know that. All right? So using this, I can prove that a positive times a negative is a negative. Now let me change that. So let me do it one more time. So again, you can pick any value. Let's go 2 times and let's pick 8 and negative 8. Again, 8 plus negative 8 equals 0, right? So I, nothing changed. Let's do the distributive property. We got 2 times 8 plus 
2 times negative 8. Again, we're using distributed property. Uh, 2 times 8, we, all, we know that's 16. Plus, again, how do I make this equal to 0? So if I didn't know what a positive times a negative was before, now I have to, by, by logic, know that this, in order to keep this sentence true, has to be equal to negative 16. If it equals to 16, 16 plus 16 is 32, it wouldn't work. So just by logic, positive times a negative here has to give me this. Now, <clears throat> let's use that to figure out what a negative times a negative equals to. So again, negative 5. Let's change that 0. Pick any two numbers. doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick 3 and negative 3. So, <clears throat> apply the distributed property. Negative 5 times 3. And then this becomes negative 5 plus negative 5 times negative 3. Well, we already proved that a negative times a positive is a negative. So we know this is going to be negative 15. Now, going back what we done so far, we want to keep this sentence true. A negative times a negative here has to equal what to keep this sentence true? Well, we know it's 15, so it's either going to be positive or negative. So if it's negative, negative 15 plus negative 15 equals negative 30, so that's not going to work out. But if it's positive, negative 15 plus 15, e does equal 0. So just by logic here, what does this t these two factors multiply have to equal? Have to give you a positive number. So that tells you that a negative times a negative equals a positive. And that's your little proof. Okay, so um, quickly going to, I mean, I think this first page, well, I'll do the first page anyway. So um, quickly do it. No, that. Yeah, okay, so here you'll notice, so this, you can, it's more to cement what we talked about today. It's 3 times 2, well, it is 6. The answer, I'm going to write positive. And what do I know about these signs? They are the same. 3 and negative 2, they're different signs. So this is negative 6, and the answer, obviously, is negative. is negative. This is also a different sign. The answer is still negative 6. And the sign is negative. When they're the same signs, negative 3 and negative 2, the product is positive. That gives me positive. This is the same sign again. They're both positive, so the answer is 6, and the sign is positive. Again, this is different. So my answer is going to be negative. Right? This is different. One is negative, one is positive. So it's going to be uh, oh, it's different that I write here. Negative 6. Sorry, ne not negative 6. Oops, sorry. This is 15. This is negative 15. And this is negative 15. Apologies. And then this is a negative times a negative. They're both the same sign. And the product is 15. So. Again, you can notice what's happening here, and obviously you notice that if the signs are the same, you end up with a negative, uh, with a positive uh, sign. If the signs are different, you end up with a negative sign. And again, that's another way of looking at it, but I really want you guys to know how to prove, prove it. So you can answer the bottom questions, list the letters of the problems that have positive products. Uh, you can look at the top and look at the letters here on the side. Each problem has a letter, right? So. And according to this, let's answer the questions. I, let me see. I can answer some of these questions. Uh, how can you tell the product of two integers is positive or negative if both factors are positive? Sorry, are the same. How, oh, both factors have the same sign. Right? They're either both positive or both negative. Then the product is positive. If both factors and oh got laid out both factors have different signs then the product then the product is negative. Okay? What's a general rule for multiplying integers with different signs? Well I just wrote all of that. So the variable B is a negative number so B is a negative number, any negative number. And imagine a negative number and take that negative number and multiply it by zero. What is the product? Well, zero. Kind of a silly question, but it's there nevertheless. Uh, the other one, the other page, uh, where is it? 
this one. Okay, so please read, because I saw some of you multiply, it says, just find the, determine if it's positive or negative. So this one is a positive and a negative, so the answer is going to be not positive and negative. You have two numbers being multiplied here, both negative, so my answer is positive. This is a negative times a positive, they're different signs. Uh, that's 0, okay, that's negative 30, that's negative 121, that's positive something, 78, this is positive 54, right? This is going to be negative because there's three negatives being multiplied, it's going to be negative whatever that is, negative 21, 105, negative, yeah, 105. This 11 here, it, there's two negatives, so when there's an even number of negatives, we know the answer is positive, so it's just positive 1. This is a positive and a negative and times a 0, so it doesn't matter. It's just going to be 0. No, okay. And this, the, the, the substitution is pretty important. Uh, sorry, the, 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 the exponent. So this, let me write it the long way. This is what that really means. So it's a positive times negative times a negative, which is a positive. Right? Or if you look at the exponent, if it's a pot, uh, even exponent and a negative base, then the answer is going to be positive. So this one is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So if you think about it, it's a negative times a negative times a negative three times. And when it's an even number, odd number, sorry, the answer is negative. In this case, negative 8. Careful with this one. Remember I told you in class, this exponent only affects the 7. It's only raising the 7 to the second power, so that minus sign just hangs out there. So let's do 7 times 7. 7 and 7 is 49. Don't forget that negative sign there. So final answer, minus 49, negative 49. Same thing here. It's That hangs out until I find out what 6 times 6 times 6 is. And I have no idea what that is. Uh, 16, 64? Right? No. 96? Sorry. Oof, what am I doing? 36 times 6. Uh, uh, 36, 216. Sorry, negative 216. Okay. So look at your substitution here. A times B, it's just negative 2. I like to put my negative in parentheses. A times B is that, so it's negative 6. Positive times a negative. Here we have negative 2 times 3 times negative 8. There's two negatives, so that's an even number of negatives. So I know my answer is a positive, so it's just a matter of 48. You don't need that plus sign, but I'm just letting you know. Negative 2 times b, which is 3 to the third power, minus a, which is negative 2, times c, which is negative 8. So, order of operations, let's take care of the exponents first. So, it's negative 2, 3 to the third power is 27. And then minus negative 2 times negative 8. I could have multiplied, but I'm just doing it in steps. So, let's do these two, these two, and then subtract. Uh, negative 54, minus and two, negative 2 and negative 8 is 16. You want to change that to addition, you may, and I'll do that. Opposite, right? So subtraction becomes addition, and the opposite 16 is negative 16. So final answer, negative uh, 70. That's what it looks like. You lose $5 each time you miss a school day. You missed school for three days. How much did you lose? Well, the easier way of writing this would be three times, and if you lose $5, it's negative 5, right? You could have also written this as this. Right? Every time you lose, you add more debt or you lose money. Um, so either or is fine, and either or gives you negative 15. But because I guess we're doing multiplying, this is the expression we're looking for. Last one. Must be a little bit tricky if you don't pay attention to the question. So you have you have two integers a and b, and their product is 24. So what's the least sum of a and b? What's right? The, what is the least possible sum of a and b? So let's list all the numbers that multiply give you 24. 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. Now if I were to add these, right, add the factors here, 1 plus 24 plus 25, 2 plus 12 equals 14, 3 and 8, 3 plus 8, by the way, is 11, 4 plus 6 equals 10. So, which of these pairs has the least sum would be this one, wouldn't it? If 
you left it like that, you're incorrect because you're missing a whole set of factors here. Negative 1 times negative 24 is also 24. Negative 2 times negative 12 is also 24. Negative 3 times negative 8 is also 24. And lastly, negative 4 times negative 6 is also 24. So this factors to consider. So let's add them. So we get so negative 1 plus negative 24, negative 25. Negative 2 plus negative 12 is negative 14. Negative 3 plus negative 8 is negative 11. And negative 4 plus negative 6 equals negative 10. So now let's really look at this question. Which ones, which of these have the least sum? And the least sum is this guy right here. Right? Negative 25 is furthest to the left on the num line, which makes it the number with the least value. So this is your answer. So the, the two A and B, values of A and B that has the least sum is negative, tw negative 1 times negative uh, 24. Because if I add these two factors, it gives me negative 25. And that's it.